Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats, dogs, chickens, and mouses. Whether you in your house, you on a jet, you on a boat, you on a plane, or your ass is riding motherfucking horseback. I want to thank you for tuning in to the motherfucking Opinionated News Network. You can be anywhere in the world right now, but you on here live with me. I am your gracious host, Mr. Trent St. James. Today, we got a very special host up in the building. I got my brother from another mother, man. We are up in here a decade plus going strong up in here. We up in this motherfucker, man. We standing strong like that favorite ghetto bitch, you know, glued in weed crack. (laughs) That's how hard in the game we getting ready to go today. Now, my gracious co-host, he goes by the name of Paul Masson, a.k.a. Uncle Paul. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be his best friend, walk up to him with a bottle of that goddamn Paul Masson. And you can start a good conversation with my guy. But no further ado, hell is straight out of the barrel of the Bronx, New York, man. Uncle Paul Masson, man, how you doing, bro? I'm good, I'm good. How you doing today, brother? Man, I'm doing real good, man. I got a question, man. This is actually a topic of the show today, man. Is it feminism or is it Captain Save a I think now... It is definitely Captain Save a Ho. Couple couple years ago it used to be feminism. But now, definitely now. Have you ever saved some hoes, man? And if so, man, can you tell me about it? I've definitely saved some hoes. Mm-hmm. Um I've saved some hoes when I was in high school, starting in high school and and and, and into my early early ages of twenties. Um at first, I didn't really know that's what I was doing, but it turns out I, that's exactly what I was doing. Um, you know, when when you when you put other people first before you, you 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 forget that in order to take care of people, you gotta take care of yourself first. You know, so at the end of the day, when you save a hole first, you still leave yourself out. You know, mm-hmm. no. What would you say to some of the people that say, why come they gotta be hoes? Why come they gotta be bitches? I get that question a lot. But, you know, unpack that for me, brother. I mean, at the end of the day, if you don't wanna be called a hoe, don't act like a hoe. Don't be out here fucking and sucking all kinds of dicks. Mm-hmm. You know, you, 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 you wanna be treated like a lady, act like a lady. You know, at the end of the day. Now, um, some might say that that's a double standard. They say that men can do what they want. But why can't a woman do it? Well, you got to ask the other ladies that because they they judge other women harder than us men do. Mm. And, and, and that is like out the horse's mouth. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, you say that women go harder on other women than men do. They do. I will actually back that up with you, brother, because, you know, I did a a little while ago, man. I was hosting this show, man, and, you know, I was showing a a few of my ex-girlfriends off, and I I thought they was fine. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm like, she she good. You know, they was fine in the most crazy thing. Like, I can't believe that bitch took that picture. She ain't put no uh, cocoa butter and stuff like that on her leg. I'm like, what the fuck they got to do with the rest of (laughs) them? You know what I'm saying, and 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 that goes to show you that you know they're their hard, they're their hardest critics, you mm-hmm. know. But at the same time, they also they also their hardest uh, they, they 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 support each other in the most horrible way, you know. They tell you they tell they tell each other, oh yeah, girl, um, go ahead, I'm um, your man ain't gonna know. You know, we ain't going to say nothing or they tell each other that tell each other to 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 go ahead, leave him. He's no good for you. Mm-hmm. All the while they thinking about being with your man. All the while they thinking about how to bring you down as a woman, you know? Mhm. Now, I'm a firm believer that there are inevitable eeps, eps and peaks in any relationship. But I believe that everything in life requires balance. That's what the the Chinese meant with the yin and the yang. For 
one standpoint, there has to be a counter standpoint. The scientists have theorized this. They have said for every action, there's an equal or greater reaction. So likewise, I have seen uh, women in my lifespan, man, who have encouraged each other's bullshit to where it's, oh, girl, leave him. Mm -hmm. You don't deserve that. When in reality, as humans, we are always growing. And this is not something that I am saying scientifically. Your cells are always growing and regenerating. So on a scientific level, you can meet somebody who you are going with and your growth is mismatched. But if you wait it out, then that growth will start to stabilize. I have been in a relationship where my girl might come to me and she might point specific things out to me, say, hey, baby, you fucking up over here, or hey, that ain't your war to fight right there. You know, you need to sit back and let them go ahead and fight their war or whatever and leave you up out of it because at the at the end, you might step out there, you might get stabbed, hit with an ice pick, get shot, maimed, murdered. And at the end of the day, I got to deal with that. So you got to let them folks fight their wars and you sit back. Well, at first I was apprehensive to it. I said, no, nah, no, nah, it's not right. But eventually I grew to seeing things her way. But that kind of came with maturity and understanding as a man to grow and take heed to a woman's discernment. Not everybody can grow and take heed to a woman's level of discernment right off the bat. Likewise, it might take your woman longer to understand what it is that you are trying to say. But in my uh, in my experience as men, men will wait for till a woman grows out to reach things to seeing it their way. Whereas uh, most most men won't advise a guy to leave a woman. Now they would do, they would aid and do shit to help him to get his woman to leave. Mm -hmm. But I don't know too many men that say, man, you need to leave your bitch. Period. You know, just Period. straight up. Bro. Yeah. How do you feel, bro? Um, I, I definitely feel that. I feel like uh, men feel like when, when a man actually decides to be with a woman, that is his decision. That is his decision. And, and he's willing to see it through and through you know even when your homies might see you going through a rough time and they want to tell you the things that they want to they feel like it's best for you to either learn on your own or that to 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 come for advice that's gonna actually help the relationship instead of build it down um just like you uh i've i've learned i've i've grown and I've come to understand things and I've come to understand a lot more about me. And what I've come to learn about me is that there is a way to there's a way to get your point across, make your demands clear and to also do it in a way to where the woman doesn't feel like it's a task. Or it's it's um, disrespectful or any anything like that. She wants to do those things for you, and as a man, you have to you have to come into that. You have to learn. You know, you have to you have to grow, and you got to be able to be able to um, change things up. Mm -hmm. No, it is a proverbial thing that said out here, bro particularly where we are in the greater St. Louis area. And I see this thing kind of reverberated through uh, the hip hop music of today to where it says that niggas ain't shit. And I disagree with that. The reason why come I disagree with it is because there's an African proverb that says that when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So if your experience in dealing with men, your experience in dealing with uh, the dating game is that niggas ain't shit, Maybe it's something inside of you that you have not activated yet to be greater, to find a greater man that is more in line 
with what it is that you truly desire in your heart and not with Megan the Stallion, not with what Cuban Dial, or not with what uh, Dage Loaf or any of these uh, idiotic females tell you is the right thing to do. You know, how, how do you feel about uh, people believing in sayings, believing in colloquialisms, but not necessarily believing in the truth? Well, you know, they they want to paint themselves a, a fantasy, you know, as as we may say, um, they have unrealistic goals and what a relationship should be or unrealistic goals and how their life should be, you know, and and the honest truth is, you know, you know, they what they see, they try to emulate and like, you know, every man's not a baller. You know what I'm saying? Every man isn't. Uh, their own business owner You know There's a lot of 9 to 5 guys uh, uh, Overnight working guys And a lot of guys like that You know what I'm saying um, The men that make it in the small percentile That they're chasing You know what I'm saying It it, it doesn't occur You know So You know having those unrealistic goals You know you become You become one of many Chasing the few Versus chasing actually something that will actually benefit you, make you a better woman, make you a better person, a better mother, a better, a better uh, uh, person in society. You know, is it's a lot of people don't take pride in that. You know, it's just break break a man down. You know, saying that niggas ain't shit. Like you, you really saying the black man ain't shit. So when when you know. Especially black women when they say niggas ain't shit Like what you really saying is You agree with all the other races You agree that you know We're the bottom of the total pole And that we offer nothing you know what I'm saying But yet <laughs> we're your biggest Advocate advocate. You know we're, we're, we're the We're the ones that support you You know So uh, let me ask you this brother uh, How does Being in America Affect your ability Ability to be able to be a man, to be able to be that head of the household. How is it that the American laws either aid you or how is it that those laws prohibit you from being the man and regulating your household and also keeping order in your household? Mm -hmm. How do you feel that you are affected by that? Uh, the American laws does not help us at all. They uh, they definitely keep us down. Um, and and to say this, if you're not a man on your shit, then you know you can't be the he head of the household. If you're not a man handling your business, you can't demand things of your woman. You know, let's let's just get that out the way. You can't be a man not not working, not doing anything with your life, and expect that a woman to follow you and, and listen to you. But with within that same sentence, the laws don't help us at all. You know. Um, as as you as you've seen in the recent weeks, you know uh, that that white woman Karen can just flip the script in a second and have the police called on you and showed up on and, and come and arrest you. You know, you know how many times that happened. You know, a woman starts a fight. You know, and next thing you know, she calls the cops on you. And I'm not saying domestic violence ain't real and stuff like that because it's very real and that does happen. And you know. But at the same time, you know, the laws don't really help us. You know, they put us at a disadvantage, you know, yeah. from the child support and and um, the, the the brutal policing. You know, things things are rough for us out here, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, me and you, bro, we go. We go 10 plus damn near 15 plus back in the game. Yes, sir. You know, we, 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 we ain't new to this, bro. We true to this. You know, and I tell many folks all the time that I went to both Million Man Marches. I went to the first Million Man March 95, but also mm -hmm. went to the one in 2015. Yes, sir. I was right there with him. Yeah, you was right, you was right there with me, bro. Now... As a partner, bro, we I, I'm 30 now, bro. I think I met you on 17, 18. You know, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 
And we was out here, man. We was boys, bro. Now we are, uh, you know, men, boys and men, you know, quite <laughs> literally. Bro. And it was a point of time, it was a period to which you were in a marriage type of situation, bro. You been married for what, six, seven years, bro? Yeah, yeah. It's a long time, it's bro. A long commitment. Long time, bro. Why you, all that time you was married, bro? I was out in the street. I was, <laughs> out the I was fucking me. Oh, Nick. <laughs> yes, he <Yeah>. was. <laughs> I was not trying to convert you, nigga. You know what I mean? I was out here deep off in the game. 609 on Sundays. Mondays, uh, happy hour. $2 Tuesdays, you pick your poison. Mm, yeah. Wednesday, that's over at Qtopia. Thursdays up in Beaver. Up in uh up in any club, bro. Go to the strip club on Thursdays. Thursdays the low key day when the strip club going up for all of the real truth. The niggas who really got money they come during the week. You know what I mean? The Friday is pick your poison. Friday I like hookah spots. Y'all niggas, y'all broke niggas, go ahead and kick it on Fridays. <laughs> you know I want to lay, lay back on a Friday because y'all niggas broke. Y'all got paid. To. Mm -hmm. Real niggas, real hustlers ball all week. Saturdays. We come up in the club, we get to the club early. We get to the club early because, again, bro, it's gonna be some bitches who've been out jamming all day. 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, roll around. Them hoes ready to go. They ready to get up on a motherfucking bottle. You don't know how many bitches I done fucked off of Peach Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, go ahead, give me that endorsement. Nigga. You feel me? Let me give me an eight. And a fifth of pizza rock. Your shit, your boy had the club going hammer. You know what I mean? I was known, bro. I was painted over there at the pink slip. Now, we getting up to Sunday. Sundays, we back at 609. We might hit the bottle up afterwards, nigga. We do the same thing like rinse, wash, repeat. You feel me? But you was my partner, you was trying to do the marriage thing. I wasn't trying to come in between that because marriage is a beautiful thing, top. Now, on a real nigga level, tell the people out here in opinionated land how many times I called you. I was like, man, you need to come out here and fuck these hoes. Shit. Maybe, uh couple times not really not not really a lot you know because he really supported me you know what i'm saying supported supported marriage but he was like man just let me know when you back out here though <laughs> <laughs> right hey you there you know, that's there a beautiful you. thing yeah, nigga but more bitches for me you feel me man uh, <laughs> i wasn't trying to get involved in that bro man. but i say all of that to say that that as a man, I put, I respected your decision of what you wanted to. Mm -hmm. You were a few years older than me, so you was going to reach some milestones before I got there. But I was respectful to what it was that you wanted to do. Yeah, if you said you ain't no longer want to do this, then when we out here, bro, I ain't no chance I'm to this, bro. You know, I met one of my, uh, one of my long-term girlfriends, bro. I think we was going into Soho. Soho has since changed over to a bar called Cisha now, bro. But that's when I met, uh, you know, I met one of my most favorite, you know, one of my most favorite girlfriends back then, man. You know, um, a real trooper, bro. When we was, we was walking up out of there, bro. These, it was August 2012, I think I was 21, about to be 22, you know? And when I met this girl, man, when I met this girl, she was five years older than me, brother. And I broke this girl hard, boy. Broke it because I wasn't mature enough for the game. She was operating at one level, needed something that I was not able to give her at the time. Since then, bruh, I have tried to make do with the situation. Haven't been able to do it, bro. Have not been able to do it. It doesn't matter how much time 
I ain't said, look, you was there then, I'm here now. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> but this is how far back in the game that we go. We go back, boy. You feel me on some bloodstone shit. Now, I ask you those questions, bro, about how America affected your ability to be a man and to basically be the parishioner and the executor of your household because as a man, as a black man, it's certain things, bro, that I have uh, I have come to discover, bro. You know, of course, I'm writing a book, uh, a novel uh, entitled The Primitive Instinct, right? This is a book title. Um, and I'm going through the scientific history, the practical history, of what I have experienced in the dating game, bro. From the head to uh, to the tail, bro. All the way from my entry to the game, bro, when I didn't have no games to where I am now, where I am a master uh, level game, you know. And the game is not about fooling women. It's not about getting over on women. It's not about doing any of those things. Any of that. You know, the game is actually about honesty. It's about being able to tell a bitch straight up. Listen, mm -hmm. I like you, but I like other women too. Mm -hmm. Now, I ain't gonna tell you that I'm gonna stop being a man because this is my birthright. But what I can tell you is that the way that I'm moving and that I'm getting down, it is not gonna conflict and interfere with what you gotta do as a woman. Now, I won't respect you enough to not fuck your friend. But that's it. That's what my friend is gonna respect it. <laughs> now, one thing that I have grown to find out about women, and I find this thing to be not only true, but very true, particularly true, is that women respect manhood above all things. Yes, sir. They respect a man that is going to set very specific guidelines. I think Minister Farrakhan will say that a woman is going to test you always to see if you're worthy of it, brother. I am a dog breeder. You feel me? And I breed dogs. I had one dog that I thought was a punk. I back tied him. I had another dog that I thought was a killer. Let him run free. One of my bitches came in the heat. The killer did not get to him. The dog that was back tied got to my bitch. He grabbed the bitch by the collar, pulled her close, and fucked the dog shit out of her. Literally. <laughs> you feel me? He, he hopped on the good foot and did the wild thing. You feel me? Now, he showed assertiveness, he showed dominance, and he showed a desire and a will to reign supreme. Now, as a man, you have all the types of obstacles that America puts in your way to prevent you from being a man and properly regulating the household. A woman's position is not to be out in the workforce. Fuck what they say, fuck how they feel. We talking real shit right here. This is a real nigga situation. This is a real nigga conversation that must take place. A woman, especially your woman's position, is to be beside you and to be the CEO of your dreams and your desires. You are supposed to be the owner of your dreams and desires, but it's your woman's job to manifest that, to take the company's vision and bring the vision into fruition. Now, I always say that there is a battery in society. The energy comes from the negative side of the battery, the feminine side of the battery, the minus side of the battery is where all of the power comes from. But the positive side of the battery directs all of the energy. Now your woman is a rest haven, a rest bed of energy. But it takes a man to direct that energy. And when you see a bunch of women out here running lawless, they out here mm. 
halfway hoeing, they mm. out there moving with no direction. No direction. They have no man to direct that energy, brother. No man at all. And you can go and get Lil Ty Ty, you can go and get Lil Javante, but you need a real true man to be able to direct the energy. Bro, I'm talking to you today. I have made leaps and bounds, but I am only as strong as the women that are beside me and behind me. Mm -hmm. What I do is I can't outwork these women because they have a level of discernment and a level of passion that goes far <laughs> beyond mine. <laughs> but I can tell you what to do because I'm able to outthink you. Now, as a man, bro, do you know what nation we are in, how this nation was founded? Mm. You know, for me, I do. But then I don't know the true history. I know what what was what I learned in school. Mm -hmm. I know what I learned from my Haitian roots. Mm -hmm. But to sit here and say that I went back and checked and learned, I didn't. Mm -hmm. But I just know what you know the typical male should know. Mm -hmm. Uh. Now, there is an Indian tribe called the Haudenosaunee, the Haudenosaunee, right? It said that America was gained its inauguration or its inception with the 13 colonies starting off in New York. Now, when we go throughout our history, anytime we see the word new, we are seeing a reiteration of something that was over in Europe or France. Well, France is within Europe, but when we see new, again, this is a reiteration of some shit that was already popping off in Europe. New York, New York shot. This is something that came out of Europe. New Hampshire, Hampshire. When we go and look at it, it's a town over in England. This is the new version of it. New Orleans. Orleans is a place over in France. That's why New Orleans has a French, uh, a French disposition about mm -hmm. it. St. Louis is the sister city to New Orleans. That's why we also have a bunch of French iteration. You see streets like the Bolivar, mm -hmm. Chateau, or Toto. Uh, you know, we get all of these streets from our French influence. Now, with this Indian tribe, you had a tribe of Indians called the Haudenosaunee people, but the French called them the Iroquois people. And with the Iroquois people, these are people that inhabited the same lands that these 13 colonies were on. Even some lands beyond that, these people were spread all throughout Canada, through rough state New York, on down through Ohio, around the Great Lakes region, because in any population of people, got to be next to a water source. Now, what we are told about feminism is that feminism starts in like 1848 when you get uh, Elizabeth Gage, uh, Susan B. Anthony, and all of that. That is when they whitewash you to believe that this is when the history started. However, we know through our research because over at the Opinionated News Network, we bring in research and we also break this shit down on the GED level, but let me get back to this. Now, we learned that feminism started a thousand years prior on the banks of a lake in Syracuse, New York. Now, on this bank, you had the Haudenosaunee people who wanted to get their rights, or they actually gained the rights to be women. This is a, to, for women to run, women to rule, women had the right to vote. Women were recognized as a separate class within the society of the Haudenosaunee people. Now, we fast forward, bro. We get to a point in history to where we get these women who are trying to hustle the game. They come with this uh, women's suffrage movement in 1851. 
Now, what happens is that it's said that history is a dam. And with Elizabeth Gage, one of the founders of the modern day, or, you know, the, the, the historical woman suffrage uh, movement, Again, now, when we are reading through things, when we're reading through history, remember, we are reading through these things from a white person's eyes. However, let's get back to this because I don't want to lose pace where I'm at. Now, it said that a woman's history is a dam. And Elizabeth Gage sat down to give her opinion on a three-volume piece of work on the women's suffrage movement. And they damned up the history and they left the key factors out. What are some of the key factors that you think that they left out? Uh, definitely uh, the male influence. Um, definitely uh, some of the important factors that those women actually had going yeah, those, that's definitely it. Definitely, they wanted to... The way that they hustled the game when they started the women's suffrage movement, or as I like to call it, the Captain save a Home movement, because <laughs> all of these were just bitches that were wanting to be safe. Bro, have you ever in your life had a woman make a false equivalency to you, bro? Oh, yeah. What, what type of false equivalencies have you ever heard? Mm. <laughs> Without giving too much information, let's see. Um, we, uh, you know, I, I can't pay. You know, let's take one. I, I can't pay my bills. I didn't get paid yet. I'll pay you back. Or, um, or my favorite from my cousin actually. Um, he put his hands on me again. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do. You know. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. <clears throat> now, for me, bro, I, I get a bunch of false equivalencies, bro. Um, one of the major false equivalencies that I, I'm able to see that is quite obvious to me as a man out here in society is that you find that women will say things like, well, men get paid more money than women. <laughs> men still get more preferential treatment. Men, uh, they get all these benefits that women don't get. And what gets left out is that up until recent, men never got maternity leave. Men are less prone to take the full benefits of the company <laughs> than a woman is. A man is less likely to go to the doctor. How many men die at work? Die at work. You feel me? Men are less likely to call off from work. Men are more more prone to say they're going to tough it out. Women take far more time off than men. Women have specific things, bro. In places that I have worked, when you go to the men's bathroom, you do just that. You go to the men's bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, I have had the pleasure of working in several military facilities, bro. And sometimes when it's late at night, bro, I just go to the bathroom that's nearest to me. If I know it ain't no women in the building in a woman's bathroom as a nurse, I'm going in that motherfucker to take a piss. <laughs> I'm not walking a, a, a mile and a half down the motherfucking road <laughs> to take me a goddamn piss. <laughs> just not getting ready to happen. <laughs> so when I walk into the women's bathroom, I'm seeing things, bro. I'm seeing things that blow my mind. Like, the women's bathroom got a whole separate sub corridor before you actually get to the bathroom area. In this corridor, they got lotion, they got hand sanitizer, bro. They got all types of tampon pads. Not only do they have that, they got a couch. They got a couch for you to lay out on just because you're cramping. All of these things, men, you walk in. Walk into the bathroom. It's, some, it's some, it might be a heavy urine scene, <laughs> but you walking in there. <laughs> now, the man's bathroom might stay fucked up for a long, 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 long time. Anyway, I gotta put some more Kelly in there. Yeah, yeah right. just a little bit. You know, now, the man's bathroom might stay fucked up. When a woman's bathroom gets fucked up, it gets fixed quicker than a man's bathroom does. However, with 
women, women are sub or subjugated, and they are defined as a separate subclass within a class that's already there. However, men, men don't find, men don't get that same level of treatment. Mm -hmm. And then when you are a black man, you are behind everyone. You're behind the Mexican, the Asian, the white man, the white woman, the black woman. Last on the totem pole. The last on the totem pole, brother. You are last on the totem pole. But then there's always a false equivalency made. Because again, when I talk to a lot of women, well, a lot of women ask me, well, Trent, why come you ain't married? You hmm. should be married. You're a good looking brother. Why hmm. you ain't married? Hmm. Trent ain't no sucker. Listen, <laughs> when I start talking to women, bro, I heard certain things such as, guess the child. Can you pay my bill? Mm. Can you pay my telephone bill? Can you pay my automobiles? Then maybe we could chill. Tim? Bitch, I'm doing all that. I need my dick sucked. Fuck is wrong with you? Yes, sir. Need my dick sucked. Every day on command. On command. You know, and they would say that they would be happy. Then you say, all right, well, let me give you $40 for some of that pussy. <laughs> I ain't no prostitute. You better go find you a hoe. If I'm paying your bills, then maybe we could chill. That's hoeing. It's hoeing. Bitch, what the fuck is wrong with you? High class hoeing. But this is where we are in our society today. So we get false equivalencies, right? The women's suffrage movement is a movement of false equivalencies. But the originators of the 1851 women's suffrage movement have said is that them being a woman is the equivalent of being a slave. That was the parallel mm. that they tried to make back then. Mm. What woman was ever hung from a tree simply for being a woman? Hmm. Particularly a white woman. January 15th, January 18th, we ce we celebrate our holiday. You know what the holiday is? Juneteenth? January 15th, January 18th. Oh, my 18th. bad. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. We celebrate Martin Luther King. Oh, right? Martin Luther King. Yeah, 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 yeah. Martin Luther King was a pillar of the civil rights movement. Do you know what started off the civil rights movement? No, uh, educate me, brother. The thing that precipitated the civil rights movement was the lynching and torturing of Emmett Till. That is why come Dr. King is so iconic to this day. Mm. Now, inside of that, you saw a young black boy that was murdered for absolutely no reason. It was said that he was whistling with a white, whistling to a white woman. And a pack of white men drug this child down, beat the dog shit out of him, killed him, and threw him in a lake. Huh. No arrest was made. The same woman who made this claim came back later on. Six years later, said that she lied about the whole thing. The woman is still living now. Mm. However, what they used to start the civil rights movement was. I'm sorry, what they used to start the women's suffrage movement was saying that me as a woman is equivalent to being a black slave. Slavery is something that's new. We read about history from the eyes of white people. Never once in a history book have I ever heard of a white woman's foot being chopped off simply because she was a white woman. Hmm. This bitch was at the table. 
and she wanted steak and they one sauce instead of chicken wings and mashed potatoes. And that's what the women's suffrage is about. Not the fact that the slave that you're comparing yourself to is doing good if he simply gets the crumbs from the table. If he gets the crumb from the table, he having a good day. But that's what precipitated the woman suffrage movement and the civil rights movement. But let's move on along. Let's get deep off into this. Now, Elizabeth Gage, one of the founders of the modern day woman suffrage movement, she said that the decision that, I'm sorry, let me get a backstory to this. The Haudenosaunee people that I was just mentioning earlier, they had the right to vote. They were given the right to vote. They refused the right to vote. Do you understand why they refused their right to vote, bro? Why they refused it? They refused the right to vote because when they made their pact with the leaders of the Haudenosaunee nation, they failed to recognize them as a sovereign nation. Mm. Do you understand what that means? Mm-hmm. Go ahead and tell the folks what that means, man. Uh, they they couldn't be rec- recognized as an entity um, within themselves. Um, they couldn't have the same respect and the same the same uh, civil. What's the word I'm looking for? Civil rights as the men do. Okay. I'm going to take what you say, bro, and I want to take that, man, and I want to add on to it. When they were failed to be recognized as a sovereign nation, basically sovereignty means individualism. That means that we stand as a nation within a nation. Mm. However, in order to have sovereignty, you have to be willing to protect it by warfare and bloodshed. Now, there are several women, right? You got the Amazonian women. You got several African tribes, some of them were depicted in the movie Black Panther, who they had a female warrior sitting. But at the very best, on her very best day, a woman can be only but a great runner up to the most first man. A man is too strong, they're too violent, they too fast, they too powerful to fuck with a woman. Now, when these women wanted to be recognized as a sovereign nation, the Haudenosaunee people, they refused it. Now, they write through the history of the feminist movement that this was, in fact, a bad thing. To that, I have to argue. The reason why come I have to argue with that is because, again, they talk about them wanting sovereignty to be recognized as a separate subclass of people. But much like in our nation today, the United States government will not allow you to be recognized as a sovereign when you use the water of the United States government, you use the stoplights of the United States government, you use electric grids that are regulated by the U.S. government, you drive on U.S. government streets, if you have something break off in your house, you use the United States government police task force or policy enforcers by the name of police officers to substantiate what it is that you are saying. Right? Now, you cannot use the services of the nation but then say that you are separate and not a part of the nation, baby. That's not how it works. You can't, that's almost like you walking, that's the equivalent of you walking into a job saying, I want a paycheck, but I am unwilling to do the work. The company will laugh at you while escorting your ass out the motherfucking building. That's the reality of what went on. The whole of the Shanti women, they stepped up to me and say, bitch, please. Y'all hoes crazy. They were refused the right to vote because they got the right to vote. They got the right to be recognized. But again, a nation is only as strong as its military back. Do you know what the number one expense of the United States government is, uh, Uncle Paul? 
Well, I'm gonna say, uh, gotta be the military. Yeah. Marines, Air Force. Yeah. Number one, number one expense of the United States government is defense. A nation is only as strong as what protects it. Period. But the U.S. dollar, bro, you could, if you, any educated person knows that the U.S. dollar is a fiat currency. However, because it's not backed by gold. We haven't had money that was backed by gold <laughs> since the Kennedy administration. Mm. Do you know what the U.S. currency uh, system is backed by? Hey, run that shit up, Chase. The U.S. currency system is backed by our military force, bro. Mm. The power of our military force is what keeps the rest of the nations around the world at bay. That we, that we definitely know. No. Moving right on along. Now, it was two women by the name of Victoria Woodhall and Tennessee Claflin. They were the first to use the strategy of turning down powerful men, such as Wall Street executives and Wall Street lobbyists. And what they did was they exposed white men who violated little girls, as well as the most famous minister in the country. Now, Tennessee Claflin and Victoria Woodhall, they were two newspaper editors, and they exposed men in their newspaper. But to go on, they were advocates of something called the Comstock Law of 1873. This was a federal law that made it a crime to sell, distribute, uh, contraceptive for abortions or to send materials or information about these things through the mail system and import these from other countries. This was motivated by the growing societal concerns over obscenity, abortion, premarital and extramarital sex, the institution of marriage and the changing role of women in society and increased procreation by lower classes. What does that mean to you? Mm. It, uh, Hit me with the question one more time. Now, the Cone Stock Law was basically a law that made it a crime to sell or distribute materials that was used as contraceptive or for an abortion. So these were things that were meant to use you, to prevent you from getting pregnant. And this was to combat what was uh, one of the major problems of the day, which was obscenity, abortion, uh, premarital sex, and extramarital sex. Yes, what? Basically, they wanted to say, fuck the institution of marriage. We as white bitches, we do not want to be married to these sloppy ass white men anymore. The women around this time, you know, slavery was getting ready to get out. You know, the uh, Civil War was, you know, on the precipice. You know, bitches, they wanted that freedom. I'm a woman, hear me roar. And then they said that these bitches and these, these low class bitches, they fucking, they sucking dick, they getting pregnant. I want to be able to have the same rights as these low class bitches, man. You know? So, I mean, how do you feel about that? I mean, I felt like I definitely feel like this is this is something that's been going on for a long time, especially during their time. Um, women were forced to marry men that they were not in love with. They were forced to marry men that they weren't sexually attracted to. Um, they were forced to marry men that provided something for them financially, provided uh, safety, whether it may be physical safety or financial safety, um, it, it, it definitely, it definitely motivated what is now, what is now a woman's freedom. You know, I can fucking suck who I want, and you know have no repercussions on it, and you can't call me a hoe. Like that's crazy. Mm-hmm. And I think that if you do a crime, you should be doing the time. Without a doubt. And sometimes in a pimp game, we used to say that a bitch got to hoe up before she gonna blow up. <laughs> These, basically, with the Comstock Law, the feminist movement's major disposition against this law was 
a A word that I think that bitches today still suffer. Accountability. Mm. Essentially, the diametric disposition that they took towards this law, the Comstock Law of 1873, to all my listeners, I want y'all to go and look that up, is saying that if you out here, you fucking and dick sucking, bitch, you need to deal with what comes along with that. But you ain't gonna be able to escape that. What the feminists wanted to do was escape the responsibilities that they had to deal with that came along with fucking and dick sucking. Mm-hmm. And we still see hoes today dealing with the same problems, dealing with the same issues of not wanting to face the reality of what it is that they have done. So, you know, when in reality, Levante may not be the best decision, they still want to fuck Levante because Levante, he he got tapes. He got a big dick. That may not be the best thing that is productive or should I say conducive for where it is that you should be going as a woman. To that, what do you say? Um, I say, um, you know, if, if you choose that life, take the responsibility. Don't, don't, I, I want to be someone different now. You know, you got to own up to it. You you got to be able to say, yeah, I suck those dicks. Yeah, I fuck those guys. And I want to be a better person now. But if you're not going to do that, if you don't want to take no responsibility, then you can't be mad when men refuse you, when men of some kind of caliber of of having balls tell you that they don't want you or they don't want to deal with you um being able to being able to have your freedom also makes you responsible for everything that you do it makes you responsible for giving birth out of wedlock it makes you responsible for raising the kids by yourself because you know levante he fucking you and six other girls you know you all get pregnant by him who you think he gonna take care of none of y'all you know but hey society tells you you can do what you want you can choose the life you want but you can't expect society to bail you out you can't expect other men to bail you out you know what i'm saying and and that's where captain save a hole comes because you portray this whole oh life life gave me a bad deal or all the men I've dealt with is terrible and they treated me like this and you know you want somebody to come save you when in reality it was your actions it was you hoeing it was you choosing to be with someone that doesn't see (laughs) doesn't see you in five years doesn't want to deal with you you know Mm -hmm. Now, what we're seeing right here is an ad lib history of inaccountability, from my point of view. Because what we see right here at, at length or at nauseum is the beginning or the inception of somebody not taking credit or not taking the brunt of the blame for a situation that they have placed themselves in, right? Oh yeah, and we still see that thing being pervasive, and we also see it being permeated here today. Um, with that being said, how you feel about the R. Kelly situation, bro? As we know that he currently sits in federal holding at the Metropolitan Correctional Facility in Chicago, Illinois. How do you feel about that situation? All right, so the way I feel about it, I'm gonna keep it all the way 100 the way i feel about it is at the end of the day these girls that were dealing with him they wanted something from him they wanted to either fame or to be with a star or money you know it's it's you know (laughs) r kelly can't be to blame you know what I'm saying? He didn't hold a gun to your head and say, suck my dick or let's all fuck. 
No, he didn't. You know, mm-hmm. and at the end of the day, you know, if you have, because I know when I was younger, girls were lying to their parents all the time. I mean, big time. You know, they tell you they doing one thing and <laughs> they sucking on something else. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But for the blame to be just put on R. Kelly, like, you know, it it ain't right. You know, and, you know, people may disagree. People may say that we're wrong and stuff like that. Those girls still had the choice. They still had the choice to work with him. They still had the choice to, you know, go be part of his dance team or or um, go work on music with him, you know, they, or, or they w- just wanted to be in his life, to be in that limelight. Because what? Someone of his standards, someone of his caliber can actually give you something to what you think you deserve. No, you are. Everybody was benefiting from the situation, you know, and at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it just goes to show you how, like, you know, someone may benefit from the situation and, you know, it, it, it leaves you, it leaves you the man in, in a position to where you're jailed, you're broke, you're you're mentally you're mentally hurting because you can't really understand like the concept of you know a woman saying one thing and and actually doing the thing she's saying but then when push comes to shove when shit hits the fan everything has changed you know Mm -hmm. i was assaulted I was raped. I was manipulated. I was this. I was that. It's a money grab, bro. At the end of the day, it's about the money. You know what I'm saying? It's about getting some kind of notoriety to where I don't know what it's going to do for you. But, you know, you're not honest. You're not honest. You can't say that. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to fuck him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I wanted to suck his dick. You know, you can't be honest and say that because it'll make you look bad. It'll make you look like a whore, make you look like a hoe. And nobody wants to deal with you once they know that. Right. Mm -hmm. So with all that being said is, you know, at the end of the day, he shouldn't have been fucking with other underage girls. But at the end of the day, let's not play like underage girls don't know. You know, when I was in when I was in middle school. You know, girls were dating guys out of high school. You know what I'm saying? When I was in middle school, 14, these girls, 14, 15, 13, dating guys, 18, 19, 20. You know, so if it's going on in my middle school back then, what makes you think it's not going on around the world? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he was just, he was the one that got caught. You know? Man, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you like this, bro, because you probably don't know, yeah. but uh, I have been working uh, very close with the Kelly family, with the Kelly sisters, bro, and through my uh, empirical research, I have found out that most of the world, mostly all, if not all of the women in that situation are lying, and the ones who weren't lying or severely embellishing what it is that happened. Mm-hmm. They giving that story from their perspective. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I have been so deep into it, I haven't even been able to reach out to you, bro, and tell you kind of the things that have been going on in the situation. But I have reason to believe that, that all of these women are reasonably blind. Now, with that, I say that to say that one of these founding women of this movement, right, Victoria Woodhall, when she was 14, she started dating her 28-year-old cousin, a guy by the name of Shannon Woodhall. He was a doctor from an outside town called Rochester, New York. Her family consulted with him to treat a girl for a chronic illness. Woodhall practiced medicine in Ohio at the time when the state did not require formal medical education or licensing. By some accounts, Woodhall abducted Victoria to marry her. 
Now that would be called the man act today, but we gonna keep spinning this shit. <laughs> Woodhall claimed to be the nephew of Caleb Smith Woodhall, a mayor of New York City from 1849 to 1851, but he was in fact a distant cousin. Now, we see historically, we got a 28-year-old man who took a young bitch. This is documented history, but he's not referred to as a molester. However, the very same movement, the women's suffrage movement that has morphed into the Him Too movement and the Me Too movement. These were not the actual name of these movements, but these are hashtags that the women's suffrage movement hides under. But their foremother, if you would say, uh, has a history of fucking with uh, an older man. But these are the same people who are bringing down R. Kelly when it's basically in their water cools of incorporation that old bi- uh, the young bitches fuck with old niggas because they got it. I'm just telling you what I know. <laughs> 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 you know, now, have you ever met a chick that got dreadlocks or uh, any of these herbal cheese chicks, the chick that smoke weed, like a uh, chick that listen to real sultry music like Erica Badu? You know, have you ever dated a bitch like that, man? Definitely have. Okay, now, what, what's that? I mean, you know, at, at one point, it's it's real, uh, it's real soulful. Mm-hmm. Um, but then things get real uh, feminist. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, when it does like that, it's just like, you know, it takes away what the dynamic of a relationship is, you know, it, it, it literally ruins it. And for, for me, what I learned in that was that, you know, I can respect, you know, your feminist movement, but what I can't respect is you bringing it into our relationship. You telling me that this is what you're going to do. This is, you telling me that this is how things are you telling me you know you basically trying to emasculate me you know trying to make me into a woman you know what i'm saying and as a man that is far from what's gonna happen you know um and this comes from learning too you know as a man you gotta stand your ground you gotta be willing to lose everything before gaining anything Mm-hmm. That is, you know, number one rule for me. You know, I'm willing to lose everything to stand on my principles and what I believe in. Mm-hmm. You know? Now, what I have met when I dated any of those super sultry type of women, uh, the thing that I have met, bro, has been you get a woman that's seemingly cool on the surface, appears to be mm-hmm. cool on the surface. But in reality, you are getting a seemingly cool woman on the surface that is by proxy one of the worst bitches that you will ever meet. Because they stay, oh, I'm so spiritual. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me light my candles and burn my sage. Oh, by the way, I'm crazy. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, because that's who my spirituality and my chakras. They start using things that they themselves don't understand. Right? You know, one of my biggest turnoffs is a woman that starts saying, "What's your zodiac sign?" Mm. There's no science behind any of this. None at all. <laughs> you know, they say, "Oh, you know, you must be a cancer." Because cancer men do X, Y, and Z. Hmm. I think that all people at all times tend to find, tend to fall into some category that people say belongs to one specific zodiac sign. That's just my thing personally, bro. All women at all times, they can fall, they can be anything on the spectrum of the zodiac tree 
The only credence, the only probability that I give to the zodiac signs is that, again, when you come of age, right? Like, by, for the most part, most 15 year olds act the same way. Most 15 year olds are dumb. You have the anomalies, but most 15 year olds pretty much act the same. 18, pretty much the same. 21, pretty much the same. A 25, shit starts splitting all the way up. But by that time, you have already set into the person who you probably want to be at that point. Now, if I turn 21 years old in January, it's the middle of the winter. Of course, I want to act different than somebody who was born in June. They turn 21 in June. It's more to do. That's the only credence that I find with Zodiac. But when I lie in Brace, I deal with a woman that tells me, oh my gosh, you're a Sagittarius. You know, you are loyal. You are, you know, whatever. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, all right. Can I get some pussy? <laughs> you know. <laughs> but it's nothing to it. There's no credibility. There's no credence there. I'm just listening to the conversation. Likewise, bro. You know, I miss several women, several of these soul street. You know, you go over their house, they got a bunch of blunt roaches in the ashtray. <laughs> you know, I got dreadlocks. You know, the Janae Aiko listening to bros. I don't need you. I don't need you. I don't need you. <laughs> you know, those types of bitches, bro. I done met so many of those in my lifetime, bro. And it's really an experience that <laughs> I can do without. You know what I mean? <laughs> to be honest with you. It's cool, but then you see basically what we call like these bohemian chicks, these like weed smokers. These are really just dusty bitches. It's time that we be honest about that. These are really dusty bitches. They seem cool and it's, oh, well, you know, I understand a man means that brother, da 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 da. That's an act. It's an act. To get you in. Then once they get you in, then you see. Flip the script? Really is. You know, now, these are chicks that are easy to fuck. Yes, sir. But at the same time, they are hoes. Have you For ever, everybody. And now, have you ever experienced any one of these chicks, bro? Tell me about an experience if you have experienced this. Nah, man, maybe a couple years back, you know, real, 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 real into her, um, uh, soulful type things um you know she had lots of incense lit in the house um uh, you know uh she found out i was haitian and all of a sudden you know she had all this voodoo stuff popping up in her house and stuff like that you know it, it, it's it's an act to get you comfortable to get you to get you to get her claws sink into you you know to get you you know ready for her agenda you know and it it, it wasn't it was definitely something that i've seen a mile away coming and i definitely stepped away from um it, it it just brings you down as a man you know it brings you down um any woman that any woman that has issues with a man being a man you know that that's a sign for me right there that means you know you didn't have a strong male figure in your life or you don't respect men at all you know and and when that occurs you know it, it puts all the warning signs up you know and for you as the man you need to read the warning signs you know and granted, you know, I can say here, I read the warning signs and I still go head, 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 deep, head first, you know, but at least I know them. at least I know what I'm getting into and at least I can get the fuck out of it, too. Mm-hmm. You know, see, I'm beyond that point in my life, bro, because that point that I was telling you about earlier, I can't I, I learned about I learned from that. 
Mm-hmm. When I was a young dude, I said, bruh, I can't deal with these these types of roads. But now it's not worth it to me to go down that road, bro, to experience mm-hmm. it, to be substantiated on what I already know. Mm-hmm. Bitch, stay over there with your drama and your bullshit. Facts. I'm trying to avoid you like the plague, you off <laughs> bitch. Period. That's just that, bro. I have dealt with uh, these bohemian type of bitches, bro. Uh, matter of fact, I was fucking one a couple months ago. I quit fucking with the bitch. Shit was too draining. You know, every time I'm fucking with this bitch, it's always, oh my God, it's well, you know, my chakra is missing a lot. Bitch, you was a headache. <laughs> Use a headache, you know. Is well, you know. I took a bath with my crystals. Like, bitch, take a motherfucking bath with some of that goddamn uh, with some vinegar. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that pussy starts smelling after a while when I'm hitting it, bitch. No, I don't want to hear all that shit that you're talking about, bitch. You either gonna hold up or blow up, but. The reason why come I bring that up, bro, is because there was a movement called the Free Love Movement, right? And this Victoria Woodhall chick that we were just talking about, she was one of kind of the architects of this Free Love. Now, she supported Free Love, right? And this started after she discovered the infidelity of that husband, the 28-year-old, Shannon. You know, and she married him in the 19th century and they were bound to their unions. Even if those unions didn't work out, they didn't have pretty much any option because they were supposed to execute a marriage for what it was supposed to be. Again, through sickness and, and health and you know, so on and so forth. Now they said that divorce was limited by law and considered socially scandalous. Women who divorced were stigmatized and often ostracized by society. Victoria Woodhall said that women should have the choice to leave an unfruitful marriage. She believed in a monogamous relationship, although she said she had the right to change her mind. The choice to have sex would not was in every case the woman's choice since this would place her in an equal status to the man who had the capacity to rape and physically overcome a woman, whereas a woman did not have that capacity with respect to a man. Now, this is what this chick went ahead and said. She said, two women by nature belong to the right of sexual determination. When the instinct is aroused in her, then and only then shall commerce follow. Commerce? What? <laughs> What was she selling pussy? Was she selling pussy? She said two women by nature belongs the right of sexual determination. When the instinct is aroused in her, only then should commerce follow. Commerce meaning uh prostitution for money. <laughs> so if I feel like fucking you, you should pay me. But we're gonna continue. This say like when women rises. From sexual slavery to sexual freedom and to the ownership and control of her sexual organs, the man is obliged to respect this freedom. Then will this instinct become purely and holy. Then will women become raised from the iniquity and morbidness in which she now wallows for existence. In intensity and glory of her creative function be increased a hundredfold. So basically, she said, This pussy got some power, so much power, I should be able to sell this motherfucker. How you feel about that, bro? The way I feel about it, man, is at the end of the day, it's been a hustle. It's been a hustle. Since shit before we before time, you know, you know, uh, men marrying off their daughters for cattle lands or money, you know, um, 
when women got into their power, they a lot of them, one of the first businesses they started was prostitution. You know, it, it's the pussy holds the power. You know, once they learned that, they manipulated that and ran with that shit. You know, and and at the end of the day, you know, we can't fault them for it. You know, we can't because, you know, this was inevitable. It, it was going to happen, you know. And for me, I just say own up to it all. The bad, the good, the ugly, you know, all all of it. And not just some of it. Own up to all of it, you know. Mm-hmm. No, how many how many times have you been in a relationship where a woman has failed to take accountability? Mm. It's been about two times. Okay, I say, bro, and it hasn't been until recent years, as my selection process as a man has started to refine itself that I have been able to find women who, at the end of a relationship, we can split amicably. Mm. In the beginning, I was dating hoes, hood rats, basic bitches, and their own end. And within these bitches, what I was finding was the same thing, in accountability. All that in accountability grew frustration. Because uh, me, I'm hot headed because I'm a young man. I'm full of fire and testosterone. I haven't grown into my maturity yet. She is full of combativeness and restlessness. Those two things are the ingredients for sabotage and failure. Period. These are the two ingredients for sabotage and failure. Now, when we see that she wants sexual freedom, freedom of her sexual organs, she has the right to give that pussy up. But what they modeled themselves after was the holding of shanty people. So here we have inaccountability to where it's saying that if you give that pussy up, you still want the rights and the protections of the man to be trickled down to you but you want to break away from the system <laughs> of which these things belong to <laughs> this is what the Me Too movement is man. Yeah. this is what time's up this is what M2 is you feel me this is what this movement is now in that speech that she gave in that same speech it, came, it became known as the Steinway speech it was delivered on Monday, November 20th, 1871 at Steinway Hall, New York City. Woodhall said this about free love. Yes, I am a free lover. I have an inalienable right, a constitutional and natural right to love whom I may, to love as long or as short as a period as I can, to change that love every day if I please, and with the right neither you nor any law you can frame have any right to interfere with it. How do you feel about that? You know, I, I, I'm, I'm just, I don't agree with it. Um, I definitely feel that in order to have that kind of, have that kind of, uh, have that kind of responsibility, ownership, and and gr- growth as individuals. You know, you you got to take responsibility. You know, take responsibility for the actions. And and we and we can we can we can definitely say that that you know so, uh, the society does work best when men and women are working together, but. You got to be working together as a unit and with the man leading at the end of the day, you know, the man's not leading. It's, you know, things, things, things definitely, uh, they don't, they don't end well for both parties. You know, one party is 
not happy one party's not fulfilled you know maybe you're not getting enough dick or you know it's not long enough or you want the guy with more money you know whatever the case may be you know we got to get back to where like it's about finding our roles and within the relationship dynamic um it's not to say that any role is lesser or anything like that but at the end of the day you know (laughs) <laughs> the roles that a woman's attracted to uh, the roles that a woman find the most susceptible and the top percentile is the ones of the man who's leading who don't take no shit who don't accept that bullshit mm-hmm. now it, it's a bunch of uh, females out here who they don't want to fuck with your program or they, they fuck with your program. They fuck with what you giving up until what you giving up is no longer beneficial for them. Mm-hmm. And then they would say, okay, well, you took advantage of me because I was a dumb bitch then, but now I don't recognize your game. <laughs> now I'm smarter now. So if you capitalize off of them being a dumb bitch, then you are, you have the right to be taken down. But Last time that I checked, America was a capitalistic society. Therefore, capitalism means that you have to capitalize off of somebody. Without a doubt. So if you are capitalizing off of somebody, then therein you have a problem. You got an issue. Because all it's always going to be somebody's coming up as somebody's demise. Lawyers come up off of your demise. Doctors come up off of your demise. Counselors come up off of your demise. Hell, they break this down on a GED level. The grocery stores come up off of your demise. Because you are unable to hunt your own food. Therefore, they are coming up off of your demise. And this is what we see. We have seen this same thing permeate and repeat itself throughout the history of the world. Now, to this, she says, I have the natural right to learn whom I want as long or as short as a period as I want and every day if I please. We gotta remember, she kicked this thing off when she was 14. Mm. This sounds like a typical young bitch. But these are the very principles. This is the fabric of what you have 45, 40, 35, 30 year old women out here believing this shit that a 14 year old abroad said who was still hot in the ass want to give the pussy up. Mm. You know, it's something that I like to call a hoes regret. Mm. That's when a hoe get wise to the game. A hoe <laughs> starts to see things different. <laughs> bitches hit the wall. Hit the bitches wall. Hit the wall. Then hit all the of a wall. sudden, you become a predator. You become the person who was the perpetrator for all of their insecurities, all of their fucked up mistakes, all of their problems, bro. Everybody who knows me tells you, will tell you. I don't like dealing with women from the ages of about 25 to about 34. I really don't. It's a lot of regret that goes on in a woman's life during that age. It's a lot of earning and fixing out the problems that a woman dealt with or that a woman caused in her life during those specific time periods. And as a man, you are made to try to Fight this uphill battle to deal with dead dick's past. So when this broad, let's just say she was younger, she wanted to deal with the hot boys. She wanted to deal with the drug dealers, the dope slangers. This was a decision that she made of her own free will. This was her decision to make. Now that she has gotten older, she has grown wiser. She now regrets those decisions. Dope boys in jail too. And since she regrets those decisions now, 
She wants to make a change in her thought pattern. She wants to make a change in her decision. So now the mistakes that she made, whether it be some bastard ass baby that she's bringing to the table or some miseducation because she had this child with the wrong nigga and was unable to go to college. When she comes to you, she wants you to make up for that. And you should be understanding. <laughs> but if you say, well, bitch, listen, you ain't normally what I deal with. So, hey, you, you still in development. I'm going to fuck these other hoes while you developing. Oh, nah, you wrong. You was a dog. Even your, your own family members are tell you dogging her out. Mm. And I see it as a man. Listen, I'm giving her more leeway than what she would give me in return. Because I'm still fucking with her while she's a work in progress. Mm. But most women want a man to come to them as a finished product. Finished product. You hear that? A finished product. How do you feel about that, bro, before we move on? Man, listen. They want to... They want... They want to get to the man who's at the finish line, but never want to be with the man who's at the starting line. Mm-hmm. You know, it ain't it ain't enough. And too often I've seen it happen with friends. I even experienced it one time and it, it, it just, you know, it's it's sad because those same women that believe they th- that the finished product line is what they deserve. That's not where they end up. That's not what ends up happening. You know what I'm saying? So we can tell you your future and all these older women can tell you your future and you still won't, you still won't hear it. You still won't understand that you're making the mistakes that they made and they're telling you how much they regret it, you know? But being, being there for a man being there with a man at the at the beginning at the starting line you know it's not something that too many women do i'm not gonna sit here and tell you that women don't do it because there's women that help men build just like he said you know you're supposed to be there and help a man build especially if a man chooses you you know and he has something going for himself however however we see that that is something that happens, but that is not the norm. That's not not the norm. Here we have this Elizabeth Tilden lady who says, I want to get this pussy popped by random dick. So the women's suffrage movement was just a movement of hoes that wanted to be saved. In 1851, in 1878, in 2018, 19, these are a bunch of hoes that wanted to be saved. This is written in their Articles of Confederation or their Articles of Incorporation. But let's move on, right? Now, earlier we talked about this guy who was the most famous minister in the nation. His name was Henry Ward Beecher. He founded the AWSA, the American Women's Suffrage Association. Now, he is said to have sexually coerced Elizabeth Tilton, who was a vice president of the National Women's Suffrage Association. Now, we have to keep in mind that these women wanted free love. They wanted to fuck and suck Who's ever dick they saw fit. This is what they wanted to do. Now, when she got the chance to fucking suck and knob all on the man's dick, grab his balls, work them in a circle of motion, ooh, daddy come in my ass, all that shit, she got it. But she didn't want to take no accountability for it. So this Elizabeth Tilden chick said, oh, he sexually coerced me. Bitch, you was gone. He was married. You was married too. You got some outside dick. 
Be honest with your man, bitch, and say, I fucked that nigga, daddy. This is what it is. I gave him some pussy. I fucked up. Instead of the white bitch saying that I fucked up, I fucked the wrong person. I did some shit that I was shouldn't have did. I was feeling exploratory, but now I have satiated my sexual appetite. It ain't gonna happen no more. Nah, she said that the minister sexually coerced her. Bitch, you was giving a pussy up. Quit playing with a real nigga. <laughs> now. Inside of this, they say that women have been deprived. They say that there was an attorney by the name of Belva Lockwood. She was a member of the NWSA. And she campaigned for the presidency and she won the electoral vote in the state of Indiana. But do you know what was excluded out of the women's suffrage movement? No, sir. Black women. That's interesting. Very interesting because the very gains, the very thing that gave it its legitimacy was you had a bunch of these white bitches who were saying that me being a woman is equivalent to me being a slave. They got a bunch of black women to back them saying this shit. When in reality, they was pulling a heist move on their own men. But not only that, never once did they speak up for the black men who were getting hung in the trees. They didn't speak up for none of the black issues that were going on. The woman's suffrage movement was a selfish motherfucking movement that no black woman should ever be a part of. But to keep going on, they used the black women and they used them in the state auxiliaries to get more people in. But the women's suffrage movement has only been beneficial to white American born suffrage. It has not been beneficial to anything else. So when we get to Amanda Seals, when we get to uh, uh, Tarana Burks, okay? When we get the Kenyatta Borns <laughs> and all of the women that was in Surviving R. Kelly, all of the bitches who, uh, who was coming out, man, and who have spoken out, the women against Bill Cosby, the women against uh, Russell Simmons. We see where the problem lies at. We see where the problem lies at. None of this was ever about what they said it was about. This was about some hustling that took place. Inside of that hustling, then we see a bunch of masquerading. We have seen a game of three-quart Monty being played with black people's rights. The same rights that these people are using for the suffrage movement, these rights were gained doing civil rights. Now, again, I want one white casualty that died in the civil rights movement. And I ain't talking about nobody who was just out there with the black folks. Show me the head of a white organization. Show me a senator. Show me a congressman. Show me a policeman that died during the civil rights movement. Somebody of significance. Show me somebody of significance who died during the civil rights movement. We have yet to see somebody of significance die in order for black people to get rights. How you feel, bro? Man, um, you, you hit it right on the monies, man. You know, we, we haven't. Uh, with the recent protest, though, I'm going to tell you this. Um, I've definitely seen a lot more white people stepping out and stepping up for Black Lives Matter. Uh, I even saw this uh, 
this meme that she, I think you shared it. Um, white girl was like, BBC matters, you know, in it, in it, with, with, with seeing that, you know, it just, it tells you where we came from and, and not just that the, you know, big black cock matters, you know what I'm saying? But to where we're loved and respected. Now I'm, I'm gonna tell you this, you know, I definitely, um, uh, I don't think as much, I don't, I don't think a lot of black people are, I don't think a lot of black people are with the protests, you know what I'm saying? As much as, as much as, uh, as much as we were with Michael Brown, those four or four or five years ago, um, but they are out there though, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying black people's not there, but you know, to see the amount of white people that's in New York, in California, it, it does it does the heart good that, you know, black lives matter. But honestly, I think they saying black man lives matter, you know. Mm-hmm. But that's a conversation for a whole nother time. Mm-hmm. So, bro, in closing, bro, what did you take away from this session or today, bro? Um, I definitely took away that, you know, a lot of things uh, in history, especially in women's history, were manipulated for the benefit of the time. Um, yes, it helped moved us forward as a society and as people but at the same time it definitely set us back um a lot of the issues that young men little boys old older men a lot of people that will go through will be in direct result of 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 those things that occurred and um in closing i've definitely come to understand that there's a lot more history for us as black men to definitely read into and learn about um i feel like it gives us not power but understanding of who we are you know and it gives you that direction that let's say if you didn't have a father figure in your life or you didn't grow up around a lot of strong-minded men you know it definitely helps you make up your own mind and not fall system to being in the group dynamic which is a female mindset that a lot of men are now you know i say that in closing i say that the situation of the black person albeit man or woman is a situation of constant warfare. And the only way to combat warfare is with counter warfare. Meaning that an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Now, that has many different meanings, but we will go with a f- we will go with a few isolated situations to go ahead and wrap this thing on up. Now, in the late 60s to the beginning of the 70s, but really the late 60s, we saw a ton of black folks going off to fight the Vietnam War. Now, all through the uh, jungles of Vietnam, we heard Ho Chi Minh, the general and the leader of the Vietnam Army, he was saying, black man, go home. This is not your war. Black man, go home. This is not your war. Now, it's most beneficial for the continuity of the black race to have a black heterosexual man at the forefront of all black situations. What the Me Too movement, what the Time's Up movement, has, what this fake ass bullshit woman suffrage movement has done is take heterosexual men, heterosexual black men in some instances, have removed them from prominence and have ushered in a bunch of whitewashed women and a bunch of feminine faggot fuckboy ass men. And if your head, if your leader is taking dick in the ass, 
You in trouble. You gotta say that shit plain. J. Edgar Hoover was the director of the FBI for many years. He had several abuses of power. He is the reason why I come the directors of the FBI or have a specific time limit of which they are able to serve because of how much, how many abuses of power he executed from his role as the director. But most of that abuse of power came because he was a faggot fuck boy bitch ass nigga. Period. If you don't have a heterosexual man in front, then the rest of this shit is gonna fall. How can you as a woman take your direction from a man that's bent over taking it from another motherfucking man? Mm. Sucking another man's dick. You cannot have a man that's leading you that is flimsy within his own posture. It cannot happen. It will not happen. When you look at your boys and you see that your son is not growing and not maturing at the same rate, at the same pace that he is supposed to because it was something wrong in your decision making as a mother. And that's something that the women have to deal with. That's something that they have to deal with. Now, we have seen the women come in. We've seen them be hoodwinked and bamboozled and hold out, slutted out for the creation of the him to move. Now, Susan B. Anthony publicly condoned racism why using black men to come up. In 1913, a black woman by the name of Alice and Paul, Alice Paul, shut the game up and created a National Woman's Party. From this party, they ruled that they rolled that on in to the 1919 congressional hearing where they voted on the women's right to vote. August 26, 19. 20 women gained the right to vote. Now, why is that year 1913 important? Because this was around the time that a lot of your divine nine organizations were being created. This is the Reconstruction Era, the Thetas, the Phi Beta Sigmas, the SG Rose, the Delta Gamma, whatever the fuck the other Greek word is, Alpha Kappa Alpha. The Kappas were all created during this time. You had a black energy that was organized. It was constructed. You had black Wall Street popping off. You had the black people that were starting to rise up. Black people, they were doing different things. Black people were migrating up out the south, going up northward, later going out westward. And you seen black expansion. You seen a bunch of race wars popping off in Cleveland, East St. Louis, St. Louis, Rosewood, South Carolina, Detroit, Akron, Ohio. You seen all of these race wars that was popping off and these white bitches took this and they used this as the motherfucking vessel to ride on for their own individual selfish thing. And what I'm going to say, bro, before I get on up out of here is find your man. Fuck looking for 100% good, nigga. You need to write down a list. Write down 12 things that you need the most. Take that list and throw that shit away because you're going to write all bullshit. I know how to fuck y'all <laughs> Find the foremost essential thing that you need from a man and any man that you date from this day on. Ask yourself, does he meet these four fundamental needs? And then that's the nigga for you. Thank you for tuning in to the Parental Advisory Podcast. I have been your gracious host, Mr. Trent St. James. 
Uncle Paulie out of the Bronx, New York, man. Go ahead and plug your shit, bro. Yes, sir. It's been uh, wonderful being on the show. Um, I'll definitely be back. You know, you guys stay tuned and listen to what my brother got to say, man. All right. Make sure that y'all are going subscribe to the Patreon at Grad School. Patreon.com slash Grad School. That is G-R-A-D S-C-H-O-O-L. Make sure you log on to www.opinionator.com. Go and buy some merch and support the channel. Now, if you're too lazy to do either one of those things, log your dusty ass on to Cash Out. Press the dollar sign and type in T R E N T J. I'm sorry, T R E N T S T J A M E Z. And send a donation over to the channel. All of those of y'all who reach out and y'all ask me to cover specific things, y'all ask me to do specific stories. Go ahead and send a donation in with these specific stories that you asking the nigga to do. It take a lot of time to bring y'all this. It costs time to read these. It, it takes time. It costs money to read these. Go ahead, man. If you like the channel, if you fuck with the channel, go ahead and donate to the channel, man. Again, Cash Shop is T-R-E-N-T-S-T-J-A-M-E-Z. Send a nice donation in. Go over to opinionated.com. That is A P I N Y U N, the number 8D.com. Go ahead and get you some merch. If you want to get some of the more exclusive content, why don't you go over to, again, grad school, patreon.com. That is P R T P A T R E O N.com. Slash grad school G R A D S C H O O L. Make sure you go on over there, and I can be found on all major platforms. Opinionated.